watching Ebony Ladies in the DR. I'm your host, Bridget. Bienvenidos a mi canal. Gracias por mirar. Today, we are going to be touching on a very touchy subject here in the Dominican Republic. And I was having a conversation with uh, one of my friends who's Dominican, and he's a realtor as well. And so we were talking about how we felt um, 2023 was going and how it's going to end and just everything. And the main thing that came up was all of the unfinished properties, all of the new bills that are just sitting. And what me and Dublin have noticed here in Copatau, one of the properties by our back interest hasn't had, you know, there were like two or three days where there was no movement whatsoever. And so I was asking him, you know, and it was a Noval property uh, project. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, asking him about it. And you know what it all led back to? It all led back to the Haitian roundup, the migration control, immigration. You know, the um, Dominican Republic is very much like our president that we had we don't call him by name we just say orange 45 that rules by emotions and so the dominican republic government the president they have um started doing things based on emotion versus looking at the future and saying this is gonna hurt us as much as it's gonna hurt them because when they're doing the roundups and they're rounding up the Haitians um, that don't have papers that aren't here legally and sending them back across the border. But the Haitians are the ones that are doing the, the hard manual labor very much, y'all, just like the United States. You already know very much like the United States where the construction work, you know, the, the work that Americans that we don't really want to do the hard labor the Mexicans will take those jobs but unlike in in the United States where people at first thing they want to say is you know oh Mexicans come over here stealing all our jobs they taking our jobs they need to be sent back you know and they were all whoop whoop orange 45 build the border foolish foolishness let me tell you the difference with Dominicans Americans gonna lie Dominicans gonna tell you the truth. They like, ain't no Dominican doing that kind of job. Ain't no Dominican up here building no houses, building no apartments. Dominicans not out here uh, cutting the grass and hedging the bushes with a machete. They not gonna lie. They gonna be straight up like, I ain't doing that. Dominicans, I have noticed, really like uh, their resort jobs. They love the working out on the boat, entertaining. They like the beach jobs. And of course, they love department store, grocery store jobs, where they are, even they're on their feet all day, they like the AC, they like their nice clean uniforms, they like to stay smelling good. And so they're not even trying to lie and say that the Haitians over here taking their jobs. It's just that old Dominican Haitian history that some people want to continue the beef between the two countries. And so that's going to be there. And they just want Haitians to go back to Haiti, you know, that type of thing. They don't want the government taking care of them if they're not here legally. Okay, I get it. But you got to think about it um, with just like in the U.S., who's going to do those jobs? Now, me and Devlin, we live in Cocoa Y'all know that because I love Cocoa right? So I've been away in the States working. So when I came back, Devlin's like got pictures all in the phone, strolling for me to see it. I can walk out in the garden and see the garden is not immaculate like I'm used to, right? Devlin's like, oh, I haven't seen a gardener in like a week. Okay, where's our gardener? So there you go. Our gardener was a Haitian guy. Our second one, second, second one, I think it was a Haitian guy, right? Haven't seen him in a while. And so I would do my walks around the perimeter in the morning. And where I used to see probably 50 Haitians coming through the gate at like 7 in the morning, 7.30 to disperse and go to their areas. This morning, it may have been 20, literally. So all of the Haitians are, you know, they're doing the roundups all the time and the migration and all of that. 
Well, Cougar Town is suffering, and I sent them an email, and I already know what the situation is. If they don't have enough manpower, the jobs can't get done. Am I going to be quiet? Uh, Y'all already know I'm not going to be quiet. Absolutely not going to be quiet because I pay a HOA to live in immaculate, in an immaculate, beautiful community. So find your labor. I'll, maybe you got to take some of these cute people from behind the desk and get them out here in the garden working and doing my hedges and all of that. Because, yeah, I'm sport. I like it to look nice. We pay the HOA for a reason. So if your country wants to lead by emotions and not think things through and not see how it's going to hurt you as much as it's hurting them being deported back to Haiti, then it's some work to be done, seriously. So that's why like a lot of times, you know, people think I just don't like new properties. I do like new properties. I like things that are shining and new and things that make sense, right? Um, so I don't believe in just spending a whole lot of money on things that just cause it's new. But if they make sense, if it's a good deal, then yeah, go for it. But like I've been telling y'all all along, wait till it's done. So we know people that have been waiting now almost two years they are six, seven months past their delivery date. They're here in Kokota, here in other parts of Punta Cana, paying rent other places when they have almost fulfilled their obligation on the new property. Well, some people's properties haven't even broken ground. Some people's properties that haven't, nothing has happened for the last two or three months. And it's because there's a shortage of workers. And so now you're here in Punta Cana, end of 2023, putting down your reserve money, thinking your one, two, one thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars is a great deal, you know, to get a little piece of paradise. I get it. But when is it going to be ready? And so think about everything that's going on between Dominican Republic and Haiti. Things are a little bit tense. Um, we're seeing protests um, like on a regular basis here, you know, uh, people that support Haiti and want the government to do things differently versus just, you know, catching them on the street or as soon as they get off their work bus and rounding them up and having them run in the middle of the street and almost get hit by cars. You know, it's just crazy. The stuff that we've seen, the stuff that is actually going on. So the government should take some time, think things through, figure out how can we make this beneficial to all of us? Because you're going to start getting a lot of complaints from Americans because Americans are going to be the first ones to complain if the situation continues to go on and they're ready to show off their new property to their family and friends and there's nothing going on. So you're going to think Haitians are your problem. Americans are going to become your problem. And I don't, I'm not just saying Americans are the only ones that are coming to Dominican Republic buying property. I know there are Russians, there are Canadians, there are Europeans, but I'm American. So y'all know my channel is all, always about United States and Dominican Republic because I'm an American girl, you know and slash Dominican now but you know so I'm just saying so like right now we have all of these unfinished properties all of these things that are um in the process but you spent your money and it's like when is it gonna be done well we don't know when are they gonna stop snatching the the construction workers and sending them back to Haiti when are they gonna stop snatching our gardeners and sending them back to Haiti because the garden's got to get cut. The grass got to get cut. But, you know, I'm just saying Americans did the America did the exact same thing that Haiti is doing when Orange 45, y'all know who I'm talking about, was a, it was something going on that he didn't like that, you know, he didn't feel like was um beneficial to him or the other Republicans in the party to make their lives better or easier, then he did away with it. You know, he ruled by emotion versus common sense. And that's what we're seeing here in the Dominican Republic. Y'all know I love living here. I love it. It was the greatest decision we could have made. 
But I'm seeing now, you know, all of how their hasty decisions and not thinking things through are hurting everybody. I'm not waiting on property to be built. My house is done. I'm living in it. All is good. But then I'm affected because of, you know, the garden, something as small as that, because the labor is no longer there. So when you all are so anxious and so excited to give away your money to, to buy dirt, like I always say, buy properties that aren't finished or in the process, really seriously now think twice about that because the manpower is just no longer there. You know, and so these projects are going to take a really long time to get completed unless the government says, uh oh, we made a mistake. Let's go to the board and, and work out some deals with the people that can come over and help finish up some of these projects that can help with our infrastructure. Because Dominicans ain't going to lie and say, oh, yeah, we'll do it. We want that job. They're not even applying. You know, so that's, you know, what I had to say on that topic. But yeah, it's what's going on. It's what's happening now. And I'm looking forward to y'all comments because whenever I compare or say anything about Dominicans, Americans, and Haitians all in one video, y'all come for me and I appreciate it. Keeps me on my toes. I appreciate the comments and all of that good stuff. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all. That's what's going on here in Punta Cana. So if you're wondering why your project is still sitting and there's no progression, no progress going on, it's because they have snatched up your workers and sent them and dropped them off at the border of Haiti. So that's what's going on. All right, y'all. I am Bridget with Ebony Ladies in the DR right here on YouTube, y'all, every Thursday, I was going to say Tuesday, I don't know why, every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to do what? Hit the like, subscribe, and share button. Hit the notification bell. It's over here somewhere. Hit the notification bell, you guys, so that when I do start back doing shorts, which they are coming, um, then you will be notified and you will be the first to find out what the heck it is Bridget is talking about. But until next time, I hope you all take care. Don't rush to spend your money, okay? I'll talk to y'all soon. Take care.